Welcome. This is Leah Bales with Creating Sanctuary. And I have a very special guest here today, my friend and teacher, Lee Glickstein. Lee and I are going to be talking about Creating Sanctuary Online. Lee Glickstein is a social architect. It is his nature, and I would add his brilliance, to see a social challenge that he has in common with many others and to devise a protocol to solve it. One example is that Lee suffered mightily with the problem of public speaking anxiety until he was 50 years old. And he solved that by creating the group program, Speaking Circles, which became Speaking Circles International. And he wrote the wonderful book, Be Heard Now, Tap into your inner speaker and communicate with ease. This is how I heard about Lee. I actually first um, learned about him 25 years ago on a radio show, New Dimensions. He was being interviewed and he had just come out with this book, I believe. And very shortly after that, I started working with him, started training and started doing, uh, becoming a speaking circle facilitator. And I use um, so much of what I've learned from Lee all the time. He was very informative and very influential in the way I speak and the way I listen and the way I hold space for individuals and groups for transformation and growth. So another example of how Lee used his social architecture is dealing with this new um, COVID-19 pandemic. Um, this spring, um, very shortly after it started, Lee developed a protocol for running speaking circles online. And it allows us to have much the same deep connectivity that we do when we're meeting in person. Another example is that Lee took on the challenge that he'd had for many, many years of having difficulty with sustaining a meditation practice. And so I think he said for 50 years, he struggled with sustaining a meditation practice. And last year, he developed the Anxious Man's Guide to Pleasurable Meditation, which guides people to access their inner sanctuary of stillness without giving up their anxiety. You can have your inner stillness and have your anxiety too. <laughs> and it's reassuring to know that. So... Today we're going to talk about creating sanctuary online and how timely and important that is. And Lee, I'd, I'd love for you to tell us what brought you to that and, and what you're doing with that. Oh, well, thank you, Leah, for having me here. Mm -hmm. The Speaking Circles, as you know, it's a group where a person gets up in front for finite periods of time, three minutes, seven minutes, say, and the group is asked to listen in a certain way that creates a safe, I call it a luminous listening field. So I coach, that's how I got out of stage fright, is I coach the listeners to give me the listening to receive, because the problem with uh, public speaking anxiety isn't a block in speaking, it's a block in receiving the available listening. So I tell, ask the listeners to listen in a soft, easy way, and then the person up front spends time with one person at a time. They don't even have to speak. The idea is they receive the listening, receive the listening, forget about content, and suddenly they start to flow because it's no longer about performance. So when now in the days of social distancing, how do you do that on a virtual platform? How do you do that on Zoom? Mm -hmm. And I figured out a way that's very surprising because people say, well, you can't really get that icon. You could simulate get close to it. Mm -hmm. But I kind of devised a way to make it very much like a speaking circle. So if you imagine you're on a screen, uh, a gallery view on Zoom, with say six people, three, two rows of three, and you're looking on the screen and that looks like a speaking circle, like your audience. Mm -hmm. And you stay with one person at a time, but here's the, here's the, here's the trick. Uh, you call out the name of the next person. Like if you're talking, if I'm talking to you and uh, you're in the camera, let's say you're my uh, first person that I'm talking to and you're looking in the camera so I can see your eyes on screen. 
So it's just like looking and talking to a person. And then at some point I'll say, oh, so Jim, Jim hears his name, he's up there somewhere. And Jim hears his name, he reports to the listening post. And I'm being with Jim on camera. And uh, we learn to smoothly, conversationally throw in the name. We're not being personal, we're not talking about even the background of, what, of, the, of the picture. It's nothing personal about the person that you're with. It's uh, that that's the eyes that, uh, that are representing uh, your listening feel. So it, when you start, when people get into the flow of it, they're able to feel like it's a listening circle, like it's a speaking circle live because they're constantly getting that listening. The interesting extra bit of training that's kind of almost uh, counterintuitive is that when you're called to the listening post and you're looking in the camera, uh, many people, when they do that, they, they don't feel anything. It's like too mechanical, but we learn to flow through the lens mm. and to see the people peripherally and to begin to understand that there's a relationship with the lens that we can, that's, that's nourishing. So as people get better at that, the, uh, the, the Zoom circle, which I only keep to an hour and a quarter, because there's a kind of strain with electronics rather than a two and a half hour speaking circle, about five people. And it looks and feels like a speaking circle. So that's my contribution mm. to that virtual platform. Yeah, I think that's so great because I'm hearing so many people who are like doing their work online and they're meeting with their families and they're, you know, even going to worship services online and they're burned out with it. And part of it, I think, is they're burned out because it's sort of like almost pretend connection, but not real connection. And what I think you're doing with this is helping us develop real connection, even though we're not in space and time together. Yeah, and, and you talk about um, ministers doing this online. And that's the other piece of what I'm kind of I'm teaching. You know, in the Zoom circle, um, you're only in the camera maybe um, a fifth of the time as a listener. We, we try not to overload, the, you know, make people be in the camera longer. So only when your name is called, and if a person has a six minute turn, maybe for one minute, you're in the camera and it's a bit of a sacrifice. Mm. But, but if you're leading a circle or you're leading a, a Zoom meeting or you're doing a virtual uh, service as a minister, which they're, all ministers are doing now, mm -hmm. you actually can develop this relationship with the lens. Mm. And this is what I'm starting to work with ministers around. And I don't know, is this the time to talk about that now? Or is it that is. And yet, you know what I'd love for you to do is back up a little bit because some people here listening have never been to a speaking circle. So maybe a little more about what that luminous field of listening is because I think that's what we're bringing as we're coming into the connection with the lens and the, the call, right? Good. Can you like set the stage a little bit for like, for people who don't have that experience? What is the quality of listening and how do we step into that? Wonderful. Um, thank you for backing up. Mm -hmm. uh, in a speaking circle, let's assume it's the live speaking circle before it went to the, the virtual platform. And imagine I'm in front of a group of eight people, say, mm -hmm. and I just ask them to close their eyes and go to a, and breathe and go down to that stillness in the belly. Mm -hmm. You know, as I was developing my anxious man's guide to pleasurable meditation, I was discovering that at the bottom of each, of each breath, there's a pause before the mm. inhale. Mm. And that's what connects us to this vast stillness mm. that we share with each other. So I bring people down in just about a minute just by breathing with them, mm. first closing eyes, and then let's open your eyes and be with mm. me. Mm. Let's breathe and notice that this uh, Shared stillness is very nourishing. It's, it's, we're not going, ah, 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 ah. we're kind of being a neutral face with kind eyes. So there I am in front of the group, I'm setting the stage. And then I have each person come up to the front of the room from that place and check in 
being with one person at a time. So because of that induction of stillness, they're kind of in their sanctuary and the words come from there. Mm -hmm. Maybe the first time they come to a circle, they're still trying to figure out what to say, but after a couple of circles, they can feel into the organic sense of what wants to come through and they receive the listening as more important than what they have to say. So, oh, you're listening, like you're listening now. I'm in your eyes, I have this camera set up for you so that I can be looking in your eyes and, um, as I speak. And that shared stillness is really what life wants to be about. Wow. And then, so there's two minute turns and thank you, two minute turns. And then, and it's all video, people take their video home and they get to see what they're like when they're in their, I would call it their spiritual power. And then we have seven minute turns where people, there's still no plan, but when you come a few times, you, you just know that you don't need a plan. You look in the eyes, you take a breath and things come up. Or, or maybe you bring a problem or a situation or a story you want to tell, but you don't figure out how you're going to tell it. Mm -hmm. So people are flowing and the content becomes really fascinating because nobody knows what they're going to say. So there's nothing planned. And when people don't plan and they get into the shared stillness and the attunement, mm -hmm. people are brilliant. You're all so brilliant when there's no pressure. Mm -hmm. What comes through? So, and then we have appreciations where people raise their hand and give a word or two, not about the content, never about the content, even if the content was fascinating and you really want to find out more. But no, it's about radiance, luminosity, vulnerability. Mm -hmm. What, you know, so people give appreciations, the person repeats them. And so that's how the circle goes. And uh, then, and they were going beautifully, of course, for 25 years, and then social distancing. And now it's very much the same thing again, except that. I'll, I'll say this, because I, I changed the nature of the two minute turn. Instead of calling names, I'm in the camp as facilitator for the for each person's two minute turn. Mm -hmm. And they're looking at me on the screen. So after I induct the group into the stillness field, each person has a chance to be, to have my eyes. And that maintains that attunement. Mm -hmm. So after that, then we go to the calling the names. Mm -hmm. And we do, we do, and we do the essence appreciations too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, that quality, I know a long time ago you used to, I think, call it essence listening, you know, listening for the essence. And, and that it, so it's both that practice of listening from, like you said, the deep belly, from the whole body, from being present and speaking from that. And my sense with it, I just did the one online circle with you last week, but then have done many of the circles in person. My sense with it is it's like this energy field that we're all participating in and we're opening space, like you said, for each person's brilliance to come through. So it's really quite a remarkable healing, uh, deepening spiritual, not dogmatic, but deeply spiritual practice. So I, I love how quickly you are able to develop it for people who are doing online work now. So you were going to tell us, I think, a little more about the ministers and, and what you're experiencing as you're working with some of them in being able to present their um, spiritual teachings through this format. Yeah. I, I, by the way, I, Leah, I love hearing you talk about speaking circles mm -hmm. from that depth of awareness about, about what my work is about. It's nice to be seen like that by someone like you. So I was saying that in the, in the Zoom circles, people are in the camera uh, for small periods of time because not everybody wants to learn how to be in the camera. That's not their point, mm -hmm. why they come to a, a speaking circle. But a lot of us are leading meetings, like me leading speaking circles. And mm -hmm. ministers are, are doing services and it's on a virtual platform and what I'm showing them because I've developed kind of a, a, um, a relationship with the lens where I don't feel at first people, when you start this, it feels like you can't think 
you know, you're, you're in this mechanical, I have a black dot, people have a green, you know, I have a black space, people have a green dot, red dot, yellow dot. And uh, so I've developed a sense of, of a, almost like I'm looking into the eye of God. Mm. And I see the people peripherally, so I can, you know, mm -hmm. have this relationship. Then a minister who suddenly is doing a virtual sermon doesn't know about relationship with the camera. And I had this meeting with with uh, five ministers, uh, I call them pro progressive Christian ministers, or a Jewish boy like me, doing a meeting with <laughs> training ministers. And what I showed them. Uh, was I gave them an exercise where they look into the lens and I asked them to, to really look in the lens, whatever they see, a red dot or a green dot or whatever they see, and take a minute of silence and commune with that dot or whatever they see mm -hmm. and see what their relationship is with it. Mm -hmm. And I was amazed. I didn't know this would happen. It's like a miracle. Mm -hmm. A minister looks into it, takes about 45 seconds of deep meditative essence being with that dot. And what I know now is that you ask a minister to do, to find a relationship with an inanimate object, they will find something so great. So a, woman, so a minister, she looks in it, after 45 seconds, she says, I, see my, I have a yellow dot. And I see the planet Venus. Now, I think it was a white dot. Mm. And I see the planet Venus, which is very special to me. Mm. And she starts eloquently talking about Venus. Mm. And you could see she's developing a relationship with that white dot that is real for her. It conjures up such spiritual energy and mm. nourishment that now she knows she can go to that dot in a sermon. Wow. Hmm. Another one is taught, you know, they, all, they have, each of them had something else they were able to discover hmm. that gave them a, a, an entry into the relationship with the lens. Hmm. And now when they're going to do their services, and, and we just did this a few days ago, and we're going to find out how it translates and ultimately how it's going to translate to the pulpit you know, when, when we're back live, but um, what I suggest, and I'll suggest this to any of you who are doing Zoom presentations, leading Zoom meetings, is to take, I'm not asking you to stay in the camera the whole time, that's too much, but to, for the first minute or two, to do it like I do at a speaking circle or I do at a Zoom circle, bring us down. Breathe, bring them to the bottom of the breath or anywhere that works for you. That gets the group in a state. Uh, it, it soothes their nervous system, so it allows them to join the call. You know, and if, if you do, if people do a Zoom meeting and, they're, and right away they're cooking with content, you're not you know, tuning and bringing them down. And then I say after that, you know, don't, don't, you don't have to concentrate on the camera. Be, be with the group because you see all, you know, you see them. And, but sometimes something's going to come through you where you want to say something really intimate or personal. You know to go to that mm. little uh, white planet Venus and, <laughs> and really feel the nourishment flow. You know, what I really get from this, Lee, is like, so I think people often think, okay, well, it's a substitute we have to do. It's not as good as the real thing. It's virtual. It's not as good as the real thing. And what you're talking about is deepening it and realizing it may bring a different dimension now while we're leading or participating in online virtual events. And it may well ripple out and become something even more powerful later. And, and I actually had that experience last weekend. I was leading a group on Sunday, um, online, of course. We were, I was planning to do a day-long retreat at my house, and we couldn't. We postponed it. But we did a, an hour. We thought it was a radiant hour. <laughs> and one woman partway through said, I've been doing Zoom now for a month, and I've never realized that 
I could allow it to take me beyond space and time. I've been thinking I was limited in space and time and people were far away. This is helping me understand that we truly are all connected and I feel that connection of our group across hundreds of miles. So it's that intention we're bringing that, you know, we're, we're transcending the mindset, the limitation that I'm here, you're there, we're separate in a way that I think could have long-term benefits. You're so, uh, so right. And that's what I'm hearing from people. One of the ministers said, you know, like I came to this thinking, I can't quite really do everything I want to do. I, I see I could do more than yeah. I could do life. He said, I, everybody can, is looking at me. Everybody sees me right in my eyes. That I could never do that live. Mm -hmm. People from different other countries are, are, are seeing into my eyes. This is, she, he was, he was really profoundly excited. So yeah, this opens up new possibilities mm -hmm. for connection. It eliminates some of the ones we are so, uh, we love and we want. And, and at first people say, well, this isn't quite as good, but it's all we have. And then they begin to say, as you've been hearing, and I've been hearing, there's some ways in which this is, is, is more connected. Mm -hmm. Go figure. Right. Fascinating. <laughs> really fascinating. Great. So what can people, so I'm, I'm seeing two big pieces of service here you have to people. And we could talk about this so long or kind of <laughs> at the end of our time. But for people who are interested in learning about your online speaking circles, um, I know you're doing those regularly, right? Yes. How can they get in touch with you? Well, they should email lee at speakingcircles.com. Great. Say it one more time. L-E-E, -E, <laughs> click, no, L-E-E -E at speakingcircles.com. Good. And I'll have that in the notes also. And if people, do you have training, like I know you're doing this for the ministers, if people are leading circles and they would like more training themselves, either as people of faith or people who are teachers or teachers. using I'm Starting this. to work with teachers, yes. Okay, tell me how, what, what, um, how, how they can get in touch with you, same way? Well, same way, and okay. in my, in my um, an email I'm sending to my whole list in about, uh, in two days, I'll be announcing that I'm going to be doing sessions for the for the purpose of developing a relationship with the with the lens mm. uh, for ministers, teachers. I have an application for singles <laughs> for single people <laughs> living alone, like me, single uh -huh. people living alone, maybe with children, who can have some kinds of of, of meetings in these times that are not. Uh, necessarily about romance, but about friendship, because now it's friendship is the only thing we can really put our attention to. And, and there's ways that I'm applying this to that. So yeah, uh, email me, I'll get on my, my list and you'll get the announcements about these things. Great. And I have to say, there are an awful lot of email lists. We're all kind of inundated. Lee's are the almost the only ones I read every single time they come because they're always rich and full and they always give me a little shift and they always enrich my life. So well worth getting on his list. Absolutely. Yeah. Fabulous. Uh, so let's, let's pause a moment, Lee. And I wonder if there's anything that you would like to leave us with a, few, a little bit you would like to say as we're ending. Yeah. Well, you, um, the theme of your wonderful show is that, is the sanctuary of the, uh, I think of the stillness. Uh, yeah, the stillness sanctuary is how I translate what your show is about. Mm -hmm. And through the anxious man's going <laughs> to pleasurable med meditation, I'm, I'm for the first time ever having uh, able to sustain this relationship. And, and I, with my inner sanctuary, without uh, being wrong. So I want to suggest that people, if you're having difficulty with, with getting to that place, that you give up the idea that you're supposed to let your thoughts go. Mm. The demand, I follow my thoughts if they're, if they're pleasurable, if they're useful. So that's my recommendation if you're having difficulty. Give up the stricture of doing your wrong by 
Mm. But allowing it to be easy. You can do it walking. You can do it eyes open, eyes closed. No more demands on yourself. Mm. I'd like you all to join me in this uh, still place that we, we all share together when we're down there. Nice. Yeah, and, and you mentioned earlier that finding it just by dropping down into the breath and noticing that still space at the bottom of the exhale and just letting yourself enjoy that feeling. Pleasure. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lee, for being here. It's been a, a great pleasure. And thank you for listening. And may we all find that sanctuary within, no matter what's happening in our lives and our thoughts and in the world around us, may you be nourished and recharged and revitalized by that deep sanctuary within. Thank you, Leah. Mm, thank you. <laughs> mm.